Okay, we'll start. Uh, I was waiting for a few people they, they, they don't know how to reach our new home. <laughs> so, uh, uh, good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a very w warm welcome to uh, to all of you uh, to our first event, Aga Khan Library event um, in our new permanent home, the Aga Khan Center. I'm so delighted to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Anne Rigord, and so thankful uh, to her to accept this invitation. Uh, Dr. Anne Rigord, the senior research at uh, the University of Copenhagen and the academic director of the program for the protection of manuscripts in, in the private libraries of Zabid, Yemen. Uh, Dr. Rigord also is the head of the peer reviewed online journal Chronicle of Yet. Dr. Anne Rigord is a scholar with many uh, skills, um, as, as all of us know, especially in the, the field of manuscripts, um, in Arabic textual studies, Islamic codicology, and manuscript cataloging. She had developed her interest in studying papers when she was working on the project for safeguarding the manuscripts of the private, private libraries of Zabid. After that, she started to use the paper as a source to write the history in papers. She also developed a systematic methodology for studying papers. This lecture, today's lecture, Dr. Anne will tell us about the, her exciting research journey in this field, and she, she will share with us the outcomes of her significant research. In my opinion, and, and this is just my uh, opinion, her recent publication, The Trade in Papers Marked with Non-Latin Characters, marks an important milestone in the field of Islamic manuscript in general and paper making in particular. And perhaps um, uh, I brought the book, uh, the book with, with me. This is, it belongs to the Agra Khan Library. It's not my personal copy. Uh, and I just wanted to quote uh, something from the back of the, of the book of the cover. Um, uh, saying the quote, uh, opening the quote, primarily based on paper examination and quantitative data, the book invites us to treat papers as a source and provides tools to determine the production of manuscripts in space and time for the area of interest. This methodology offers new insights on the comp competition between suppliers to the various markets, particularly in respect of the emergence of import-export trading companies. End of quote. And before I hand over to Dr. Anne, I just wanted to, to say a few words about the Aga Khan Library. Uh, for those of you who, who don't know the Aga Khan Library, it's a, a production of the successful merger between the Library of the Institute of Ismaili Studies, 40 years old, and the Institute for the Study of Muslim Civilization, Aga Khan University, 16 years old. Um, and it comprises almost 50,000 volumes in subjects related to Muslim civilizations uh, and Islamic studies in general, Ismaili studies in particular, and more, uh, more subjects. Um, and please, if you're interested in visiting the library or having a quick tour after the event, speak to my colleagues Shah, Shah Hossein and Wasim uh, here on my left, or myself, uh, contact us, and you're uh, very welcome to visit the library. Uh, without any further ado, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Anne, for accepting the invitation, and please join me welcoming Dr. Anne. Yes. I put it on the I put it 
I have the, the pleasure um, to be here to present the book, The Trade in uh, uh, Paper, uh, marked with uh, non-Latin characters. It came out the 2nd of August, and I would like to thank the organizer, uh, especially uh, Walid, very warmly for giving me this very first opportunity to make a presentation about for this presentation, I will concentrate on the purposes of the book. It is a collective book made up of nine contributions by seven uh, contributors. Um, it's maybe a bit blurred, but you will um, see uh, the, detail the details of the presentation later. These uh, cover a large area. The places where the manuscripts under study were produced include Africa and various uh, parts of Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, and India, the Middle East, and Iran. All the papers described by the contributors were imported. The first mention mentions we have of papers marked with uh, non-Latin characters in scholarly studies such as observations on uh, Abu Shubak um, example. This is a uh, so the most well-known uh, piece of Abu Shubak paper. Um, <clears throat> so uh, as observations on Abu Shubak examples in Yemen met by uh, Geneviève Humbert in 19. on uh, Ali Kourna uh, paper man and um, mentions by uh, Adam Gatschek to uh, Benyamino uh, Arbib and Abu Shubak papers in his book Arabic Manuscripts of Vadumekom for Readers published in 2009, page 131 and on dry silk papers brought us immediately two types of paper which were produced recently, that is to say, in the 19th and 20th century. Some of them are machine-made papers. The question then is the case of production, given the fact that the industrial production of paper has been able to change the situation. Indeed, since the middle of the 14th century, the Arab Islamic, uh, then the African world, have been importing watermark paper, both for the administration and for the production of religious, scientific, and literary codices, to the point that European paper is gradually becoming dominant during the 16th or 17th century from an area to another, 
Ottoman Turkey is a good example of this attempt at local paper production in response to um, imports before and during the industrial paper era. The papers studied in the book, those whose place of production are identified, Italy, UK, Belgium, and Russia. Thus, the origin of the papers used in Islamic manuscript yeah, involved even bigger uh, when we take into account their place of production. Inevitably, paper studies bring us to global history. Paper is a traded item. More than a good, it is a commodity. And it is merely an interesting commodity, consumable, but not eatable, and kept safely as long as possible, especially when it comes to be the media of canonical texts. Paper as a primary historical source of trade, making literary codex documents, is of particular data where transmission is mainly oral, but also when it comes to uh, going beyond the coast to the interior. Not all the, of the paper was used in the country in which it first arrived. When our period begins, the onward trade continued by camel or coastal shipping. Therefore, the delineation of trade and trade routes are a central focus of the project proposed and initiated in this book. The production of manuscripts took place, took place where there were scholars and at least in Africa, as well as in the Middle East or the Arabian Peninsula, it is far from being a phenomenon typical of big cities or even exclusively of towns people. It is also known that individuals could carry bundles of paper in their travels as pilgrim, pilgrims in the Middle Ages, but cabotage boats penetrated Africa's rivers in the 20th century, and that 20th century Ethiopia had a network of suppliers in the provinces. Hence, the idea that paper, while object of commerce, could be a refined and exceptional marker, and that through the reconstruction of the route, or the route papers took to reach their users would permit a mapping of trend. The book provides a synthetic map uh, covering the main um, places for its production and uses collected in the contribution, as you can see from the screen. This book, therefore, has a methodological dimension. Terence Waltz opened the way in his uh, seminal article, The Paper Trade of Egypt and the Sudan in the, uh, in the 18th and 19th centuries, published in 1985 in a collective volume, volume edited by Martin William Daly, called Modernization in the Sudan, by relying on the items that he had collected mainly in the archives of Cairo. However, this was only done for the purpose of a, a study in the frame of a book devoted to Sudan history, and Wolves didn't not elaborate theor theoretically in order to make of his work a generic method which could be systematically used in new applications. Our methodology consists in taking the papers themselves at destination as our principal primary source of data. The first positive outcome is the establishment of the first authoritative list of the papers that were used where manuscripts were produced. It is anticipated that this inquiry generate an enormous volume of documentary evidence and hopefully evidence of new and previously unknown papers. 
The examination of these papers allow us to identify their dates and place, places of fabrication, as well as their producers, starting from the specifications of paper, papers at destination, we expect to be able to identify at once their place of origin and additionally the places of the dates of copying of the manuscripts correlated with the kind of paper used, used provides us with statistical information on the period of use of a specific kind of paper in a particular and eventually with dates to reconstruct the history of trade. As a chronic comparison between the collections in different countries provide us with an accurate idea of the extant products in each area and allow us to begin establishing the pathways by which they arrived. In order, in order to determine the final destination of the papers as commodity, we locate the exact place where the copists used the paper to make manuscripts. Since many codices were circulating, circulating uh, sold, donated, smuggled, etc., and were bought in cities famous for the copying of manuscripts, for example, Mecca, the place where a manuscript is found does not necessarily reflect the place where it was copied. Our methodology is mainly based on paper identification rather than collecting data on the place of its fabrication on paper trade. Secondary source each samples of papers at destination are gathered and the examination and specifications of the paper itself give us indications of its origin. Statements concerning the final destination of the paper produced at the time, <clears throat> that is to say for us, the time and place of the copy of the manuscripts is obtained at the first stage through the help to definitely establish the information given by the cover forms. During this operation, of styles and copies and they are professional scribes have to be taken into account. Limitations, transfers are meant here, sometimes fakes, which can mislead us as to place time of the production. This new information once compiled is the premise of a documentary database. A selection of handwritten texts with a date in their color font provide us with a statistical tool to determine the time place of the allows us conversely to suggest the date and the place of copy for the manuscripts. More than 50% and much more, depending from the region of um, which information. Papers are already seen as evidence for dating manuscripts in Arabic. However, with evidence of their use and place, they become a crucial feature that is more accurate than any others for the period studied. Paper identification is finally established through comparison with the documentation at our disposal. Catalogues of watermark, marks, first of all, catalogues of Islamic manuscripts recently published, articles or monographs. This methodology is definitely based on quantitative data. Evin Kropf um, has strengthened her corpus of papers by identifying a family of late 19th century Samaritan copists as their users. Uh, Olga Yastrebova has also extended our knowledge through her work on a corpus of diplomatic documents, the paper of which was uh, produced in Russia and was used by Persia uh, in exchanges with their Russian enemies during the Caucasian War 
in 84 and to, uh, to um, from 84 to um, 1813. <clears throat> and this is the same uh, uh, for the paper used by the uh, of foreign affairs in Tunis in the 20th century, studied by Michael Bidel, uh, for which we can infer from few samples to a special production reserved for the use of the administration. The duration of its use is implicit, um, believed to be extensive to the duration of the mandate of the head of the finance, although not absolutely precise. Developing an epistemological and methodological dimension is a signature of the series uh, Documents and History, uh, the first volume of which was published in um, 2013. <coughs> Devoted to the Islamic papyrology from the beginning of Islam to the 16th century, according to a classical definition of the document as ranging from private or merchant correspondence, to official, administrative, legal texts and others, this first volume of the series proposes to, talk, to take into account the material or physical elements of documents, not only to specify them, but to characterize the provision of positive, non-subordinated or full data about these material elements. If this approach is employed in disciplines like archaeology and epigraphy, papyrology has increasingly based its analysis on the text while failing to systematically profit from the material data. Volume 3 of the series will be on the fake, the replica and the copy, Islam 7th, 20th century, which is the publication of the Proceedings of uh, war workshop, workshop held in Paris in 2013, but this will be the, I suppose, the, the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, within our region, in the 19th and the 20th century, papers were made locally from plants in India from an early period of the 19th century. The proposed study of uh, Islam in the Antemoro um, Kingdom uh, in Malagasy. Uh, the proposed study of the history of the papers used for the writing of manuscripts aims to cover the significant changes that occurred throughout the 19th, 20th century. This is that at the turn of the century, with the industrial revolution transforming manufacturing and transportation, new suppliers began to compete for custom around the rim and the Indian. The reorganization was therefore rooted in the regional imperialist struggles for dominance in the Red Sea area and the Northwestern Indian Ocean in Africa as well, but the paper market also benefited from improvements in production technique at all levels to comment on the reasons why I especially selected papers of Islamic manuscripts marked with non-Latin characters. The book shows in many places how the New Deal in the production and distribution of in the 17th century transformed the pattern of paper supply in particular and trade in general throughout the Indian Ocean, in the Red Sea area, and in Africa. Paper is a unique basis for such investigation as it enjoys successful commodity and then used and consumed becoming the material bearer of valuable information in the various languages of manufacturers, traders, scribes and scholars, and even of for organizing trade 
From then on, the various languages of the papers whose places of production are known point not only toward the, towards their zone of production, but also towards their zone and circuit of so these uh, languages is obviously a commercial argument. The countermarks Alikurna um, came across before and uh, Abu Shubak follow a vernacular used in Ottoman and Arabian Peninsula with a probab uh, probable extension to Red Sea markets. As shown by Evit Evin Croft, Croft, the denomination Ali Kurna is attested as early as the 17th century, and as shown by uh, Jean Just Wittkamp, the vernacular Abu Shubak is attested in 1886 concerning a paper from uh, Andrea uh, Pordenone with a cotton mark entirely in Latin. Cotton mark, at least um, <clears throat> in Abu Shubak, uh, so you can see uh, this uh, Andrea Galvani, uh, which is um, under the written part of the folio and for the done uh, on the, the bottom of the image. Um, uh, so the, the countermark Abu Shubak in Arabic, um, at least in Abu Shubak paper of type C, C so this is um, our type C of or type C of Abu Shubak paper, uh, uses the language of the country of consumption. A well-known proverbial sentence in Yoruba language expressed in Ajami Hausa is uh, described um, by Michelle Biden in her first contribution to the book. This is the one. Abu Shubak, meaning the man in the window, refers di directly to the contribution, um, refers di uh, directly, sorry, to, to the watermark of the crescent moon and face in a shield. It is worth keeping it, but of types of watermarks among the uh, Indian uh, uh, papers, which are enormous, <coughs> eat the sheet, and which raise the question of the taste of the sponsors or the perception of consumers' uh, tests. So uh, I don't know how uh, um, it, if you can see a bit. Uh, so, so this image uh, and uh, the star, yeah, star. Oh, this So this is. Some uh, piece of sheet. So you you have seen first the upper part, then this is the lower part, and then you will see uh, so the, the right side of the sheet, of which I could get a. So and here you can see there are uh, angel, two angels uh, with a, a star and. Um, And uh, again, uh, the name of the, of the producer, uh, in fact, the reseller. So this, this um, they are enormous. Um, I have tried this. This is a much better of kind. Uh, but without um, a mark in non-Latin characters. 
I think I selected another one um, uh, where you can see a ship on the top. And um, in fact, um, see, this is um, uh, on uh, uh, because uh, here this is uh, the, the upper part of the sheet. Sheet, sorry. So, um, so it's. Uh, mm -hmm. Francis Richard stresses uh, the, the, the test uh, for colored papers in blue and green in the Middle East and Iran, a test that Russian producers did not fail uh, to, note, to note. And it is still illustrated by the case of some dry stamp papers uh, marked in uh, Cyrillic, exported to 1850 and 1880, which were blue and green. Here, as uh, done by Francis for, for, for the book, um, no um, any um, example of blue and green, but uh, the dry seal with uh, character um, taken from his paper. These industrial papers uh, <coughs> ex uh, exported from uh, Russia um, these uh, industri industrial papers exported uh, from Russia to Iran and used throughout the country imperceptibly supplanted local papers from the end of the 19th century. Among these consumers, it is necessary to count the scribes paper forms part of the instruments of work. We are thinking here to the family of Samaritan scribes introduced by Evin Krop. I mean by that they can have their favorite and um, loved paper. Um, <clears throat> That there, uh, there, uh, there has been an adaptation of paper browns to the market, in particular, boring watermarks or inspired watermarks, um, so ad hoc, had already been suggested about the paper Strelune, or, of which the uh, oldest occurrence is uh, 1597. Uh, sold to the Ottoman administration, but this remained often hypothetical. Our paper marks provide a striking proof. Be behind the countermark Alikona or Abu Shubak of type D, uh, um, can be divined in producers. Italian in this case. But the story of uh, papers remains opaque and leads to the question of competition with papers exported from else, elsewhere. In the pot of, our, of reflection uh, comes the question of the industrializ industrialization of paper production. From the 17th century, one of the largest Italian exporters of paper to the Middle East, the Arabian Peninsula and Africa, was the Galvanic Company, whose mills are located in Friuli. They were, however, a late adopter of industrial paper, paper making machines in the 19th century. The generation of their industrial paper began in the week like in our type D, Abu Shubak. In the first half, half of the 20th uh, century, Yemen and Eth Ethiopia, exactly in Harar district for Ethiopia, we have also some samples of the late Galvani papers made in the shape of, uh, which has a single and uh, no more a double ring. 
the company was not doing well already in the 19th century. On the most well-known kind of Abu Shubak papers, there is the name um, Istanbuli that we have maybe uh, we have seen uh, earlier. <clears throat> it's uh, at, the, at the end of the first line. Uh, for, which, for which this book may offer a new hypothesis if we consider Istanbul as the place of the reseller. The period from the 19th to the 20th century saw a reorganization of the trade around companies having access to paper distribution networks and in contact with the consumers. These commercial structures are transnational and can be registered in Europe. It is the case of companies operating in Africa with branches in the Middle East or of companies operating in the Indian Ocean and the Red Sea, particularly in Aden and Addis and inland, in late 19th, early 20th century. This is a phenomenon that is highlighted by Latin. The text of the countermarks slips imperceptibly from the name of the producer of the meal to that of the seller, which is who is also the sponsor of the paper. So, of course, this is a good example. And uh, I have uh, selected a couple of uh, papers which are Bombay um, and English trade part, English, English make, make made in England and Bombay. Um, abroad, the producer's mark gives way to the non-Latin countermark that are an indication of the um, sellers. On the same papers, Bombay stands beside made in England or uh, in Belgium. In India, the activity of these uh, sellers or resellers is developing alongside a local artisanal hand handmade paper economy, which produces both vegetable papers and mixed papers, rags, vegetables, and recycled products. But the um, Indian um, uh, papers explored in this uh, book, which are machine made, indicate about which we would like to learn more. Still use source uh, of Bombay can be found in Yemen and in Ethiopia. In Yemen, um, uh, the, the papers Bombay uh, English made, which was uh, found in a codex copied in uh, 1916 in Zabid, is probably a residue of the English administration from its time in Aden from 1839 to 1968. Aden was administrated by the English through India until 19. 37. Not one or two, but many names that appear in countermarks, and all knowledge of them remains far from complete. Beyond their variety, some share the suffix uh, boy, like here which suggests Israeli uh, names. Representatives of this in the, on the spot uh, seem well connected to the authorities for they have supplied paper to the administration. This is not all, for this type of paper is, is also found in manuscripts. 
of chronic du manuscrit au Yémen, from mountain to mountain, exchange between Yemen and Ethiopia, medieval to this is the working lives, lives of, of individual Bahra traders whose career develops and whose promotion takes them through a position of regional responsibility. One of them from Bombay to Aden, then sent to Ethiopia. It is known that at the time English companies produced paper with or could design as requested by the customer. This reflection on the importance of papers marked with non-Latin characters began in um, 2011, then materialized in 2012 with this book project and a call for contribution launched in 2013. It is therefore a long adventure that culminates in this book. But the research is at its, its beginnings. There is much that remain, remains unknown, even in the cases that have been studied. There are the in unexpected, unexpected work, the surprise presented by the chapter of the Muzaffarid Quran from the Khalili and VAM, V and A sorry, collection, discovered by Alice. Al for the moment, it's exceptional, but it suddenly opens an abyss by uh, taking the existence of non-Latin type marked papers back to the 14th century and encourages exploration of earlier periods in targeted era. Uh, there are issues that raise research questions or involve further research and Sudan is a country absolutely in need of exploration. We were talking about India on the way too. We hope that the approach of a primary source for the history of commerce demonstrates in an even more striking way the crucial importance of the conservation of unwritten originals. Papers can be and were digitized, but in the context of digitization devoted to the text, they bear. The papers uh, remain the forgotten object of the campaigns of digitizations of manuscripts. So far, papers have been digitized more by paper specialists than by catalogers or curators. Beyond digitization, research with its meanders and new developments involves access to the originals, this book is a strong argument for such an approach. I would like to thank, uh, thank you uh, Anne for this fascinating journey and uh, presentation and I think it's uh, very very uh, nice to know uh, trade trademarks before polo and Adidas. <laughs> so this is very obvious uh, uh, a trademark in the Islamic uh, manuscripts field as well. Uh, so now we'll open the floor for um, uh, for questions. We have almost uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, and uh, please make your question short. <laughs> uh, okay, Russell, please. Um, thank you very much for the talk. Um, in looking at the origins of paper and the trade across, let's say, the Mediterranean, I'm going to ask you a question which shows my ignorance. But as the Geniza documents from Cairo were not just written in Egypt, but were pieces of documents that came from all across the Mediterranean and further afield to Yemen, can we look at the Geniza documents and see anything in the history of the paper trade? Um, I, I have started, I, I have to say, I've started because I'm working on the DKG collection, so David Kaufman Geniza collection in Budapest. And I, of course, because I'm a paper obsessed, <laughs> I had a look <laughs> at the paper. But um, um, so it, it depends from the time, of course. Uh, but we have uh, obviously local uh, production. And so it's uh, extremely difficult to 
la, uh, notre ami uh, uh, Marx, so lines, uh, so and uh, often a very bad uh, quality paper. I could understand books and manuscripts would be a very good quality. This notes probably. Generally speaking, this is my impression. We have exception because, in fact, um, 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 it's uh, not easy to um, when uh, you pro produce a, a, a codex. Um, you 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 want a, 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 a size, so, so a dimension for for your so you have pieces of paper which are left over and um, I think I found an example of, uh, of uh, reused pieces so reuse uh, paper uh, beginning of the Ottoman period uh, in uh, Egypt um, so, so uh, in, in this case, it could be good paper, and uh, yes, but uh, this um, uh, I can uh, elaborate on on your remark on on the quality of paper because one of the hypotheses to understand uh, the Jalali uh, mark, which is ex extraordinary, is uh, it's incredible that uh, Alice. Uh, one of the so it could be of course everybody thinks uh, about it and 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 also the the Jalal is a name of Jalal God huh? uh, but also another hypothesis, hypothesis is um, of good quality um, yeah and I think the the fact that in the Indian so-called Indian papers um, it is uh, written uh, made in England, etc. It's, it's to show that this is a good quality paper of Belgium. Can I ask you a, a slightly trivial question? But in the pre colonial period in West Africa, much of the cloth was wrapped in paper and the producer's name was written on it. Similarly, of course, there's a great deal of charms and other things. And I wondered if, in fact, this was part of the, the study that you're doing. And have you come across any wrapping paper, which isn't by definition always bad paper? Yeah, you mean wrapping paper so paper used to wrap cloths in it or yes and write the name of the producer of the cloth that if it was yeah. turned out to be bad cloth you could return it to the producer no i have only uh, personally maybe somebody in the floor can have uh, so an idea uh, but I have only s seen an example in a, in the um, Leinwein college collection in Vienna of an old piece of textile which was um, collected in Egypt, 19th century, and um, it's, it seems it bears uh, uh, not exactly a piece of paper but a stamp. Um, uh, to, to say that uh, this uh, this um, uh, class was produced in the royal workshop of the so the caliphal uh, workshop the caliph workshop yes so this is uh, afterwards um, I, I have found uh, I am I am working on uh, on uh, <laughs> pieces of paper but not outside the cloth, but inside the cloth, <laughs> <laughs> which were uh, reused paper, reused uh, documents reused by um, tailors uh, to, yes. But yes, um, 
yes, amulets, but uh, well, yeah. But hmm, is much more in uh, uh, skin. So, so skin. Okay. African. Is whether students wrote notes on paper or did they simply use wooden boards? Doing no, no, they also used uh, papyri mm -hmm. and um, a very interesting, very uh, strong uh, example of uh, papyri used by a uh, student. Um, has been uh, described already. Um, uh, I have to uh, find out the name of uh, my mind. Uh, but it could prove that uh, it's like a like a palimpsest. You have layers of uh, of uh, uh, text, mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, washed to mm -hmm. be reused. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so this is an interesting uh, old example. Fascinating, really amazing. Counter marks in Arabic script were obviously produced in response to a market demand. But for example, the Italian papers, the trade union and Andrea Bell. Galboni, Galboni, um, is very widely used in Southeast Asia for Islamic manuscripts in Latin. Mm. So I suppose, do you have, my question is, do you have any example of secondary sources documenting the, um, the correspondence or the contact with the European papermakers, which um, explained or, or um, repeat, cast some light on the mechanics of how these countermarks were introduced and for which centers and when? And, uh, so you, um, you mean when the countermark appeared as... Uh... I mean, do you have any evidence the document other than the prime Oh, right. Any references yeah. to mm -hmm. one? Yes. When? Okay, I, I now I understand much more the question. Uh, in fact, um, uh, thank you for asking because um, secondary sources, uh, as in many cases, um, so the information is scattered. <coughs> and so to uh, uh, find it, uh, it's, uh, it's a huge <laughs> uh, archives of fabric and um, also uh, okay um, monographies on uh, on producer or meals etc. Et um, uh, so it uh, it. it it, it, it shows the importance of, the, of this uh, material because now we can also uh, uh, re reorient uh, our research and uh, look for some types of information. Um, of course, the, the idea of the countermark is, um, is um, so the born in Italy, this is a well-known thing. And uh, for that, we have uh, the, the Italian taxis <laughs> on which we can rely. Um, and then uh, for the, uh, the in uh, interesting uh, case raised by, by Evin and the Abu Shubak paper, what is interesting is that uh, there is a vernacular used in the market which was caught by the producer mm -hmm. who cleverly uh, used uh, them uh, in, 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 in their paper, so uh, marked their paper with, with them. And uh, so, secondary source, 
uh, Evin could uh, find out um, that um, this vernacular existed since uh, as early as the 17th century. That's Mark Durden. But the evidence yeah. of uh, the uh, okay the, uh, you, the so the, the so the Likurna uh, in so uh, in in very much um, as far as our corpus can um, tell us. As for the Abu Shubak paper, this is a, we could say a primary secondary source because um, um, this is um, so, so the, this is the, the main point of uh, uh, Professor Wittkamp's uh, paper in, in the book because he found a letter um, in the correspondence of uh, Snook Ur Von Mieux pronounces correctly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tried <laughs> and, uh, and um, Snook uh, obliged to leave um, Saudi Arabia very quickly and, mm. um, and had not the time to order the copy of two manuscripts he wanted. So he uh, kept his contact with Van der Scheich, the vice consul uh, of the Netherlands uh, in Jeddah, and through him um, uh, requested the copy of it. So in a letter, it is said that he, he, to, he, 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 so the scribe will have to use a good quality paper mm. and, um, and an Abu Shubak paper. And because in the lab, library of Leiden, they kept the two manuscripts, so they have the, 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 the complete story, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, we could put in front, uh, so the primary source of the paper, <laughs> and the letter, which is a sort of primary secondary source, and this is how we could uh, clarify what means Abu Shubak, because um, I, I'm, I, I, uh, I uh, decided not to go through all the historiography of the subject, and uh, you know, <laughs> uh, but um, since um, the uh, the the 90s, we are struggling about the word Abu Shubak. What does it mean? And even in the, if you read, so the the uh, the counterpart of the most famous type of Abu Shubak, you see Bayad Abu Shubak, uh, Istanbuli. So for an Arabist, this is very strange. Say there is a mistake there, <laughs> and in fact, this is because it is a badal. So, I, I, hopefully, I. <laughs> Thank you very much for your talk. I really appreciate your approach to study these scripts, uh, which is coming from the Korean culture. But also, I have a question about. Of the source of the paper that's called the other one is the functionality, which the writing tools and to the language to what extent they determine where they bring these paper from. Let's say, for example, if you are writing Arabic, was it easier to write on a paper coming from India or from Europe? Mm -hmm. And also, do we have an example, especially when you were speaking about Abu Shubha, do we have an example about? Paper which had which has um, a bush back marker made probably in two different locations. Again, the last question. The last question is that do we have papers that has the watermark a bush back, but they are coming from two different sources, two different cities, which must suggest yeah. that a bush back was a mm -hmm. kind of workshop, the same mm -hmm. like when we mm -hmm. study Saad mm -hmm. or the hand pottery in mm -hmm. the Fatimid era in Egypt. Um, I will try to reply to your first question as quick as I can in saying that uh, I'm working on, uh, obviously, on uh, papers uh, in uh, Ethiopian codex, codices, and what struck me is the, uh, struck me is, uh, is that um, um, while Christian used parchment, homely produced, um, so uh, uh, Muslim used paper, for 
on the manuscript. As far as we can tell, uh, for sure in, in the 17th uh, century onwards, and we have only very, very, very few examples from the 16th uh, century, if uh, you found something earlier I'm interested to see and um, and um, and and even we are not, there are three and two produced outside of Tunis. Uh, this is interesting because it is imported paper and locally made parchment mm -hmm. and so it means there are many things you know go for or push people to go for paper uh, not only the price and uh, the quality, and uh, and um, so the the machine made paper are poor quality paper, huh? and uh, you see the problem I had to picture them. Um, and so your second question about uh, uh, yeah, thank you for asking because in fact uh, uh, apart from the the type D, so where you have warakabu shubak and uh, Andrea Galvani for the non. Um, we, I, 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 I do not know wh wh from where the, the other uh, could come. And uh, <clears throat> um, uh, before we, uh, thanks to this book, realized that there is this change with the reseller, which uh, introduced their name in the paper. Um, so the hypothesis was made that it, it was a Turkish Ottoman production. But then it was a nightmare because uh, where, when, because uh, we know that the Turkish Ottoman production went, went up and down. So, um, and, and um, what I could see, so, so, um, so, from the book, you will see that um, I could make a real statistic. I have three pages of statistics. So, so uh, and I can say at the moment is that uh, the delivery of Abu Bushuk back paper done in a uh, different, uh, followed a different route than uh, the delivery uh, of this paper in Yemen and in Ethiopia. Uh, but as uh, Sudan is uh, understudied mm. for the paper, so I agree with example and maybe with mistakes. Uh. Chinese connection at Chinese connection. From the earliest times. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 and no, all, 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 uh, uh, no, <laughs> no, even in, um, in if uh, the, the, even for the pulp, no, 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 not pulp. Yeah, we'll take the very last question and then we can carry on uh, a discussion and reception uh, just the next room. Khurshid, make it very yeah. short, please. Yeah, very short, yeah. I am, I'm not, I'm uh, <laughs> too long, maybe. <laughs> Dr. Ryan, thank you very much for a very, for a very interesting presentation. My question is about uh, local use of local and imported materials for paper making in Egypt. I'm not an expert in this area. Could you shed light on papyrus, use of papyrus, uh, 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 when uh, paper mills were already uh, technologies was already there. So what was the dependence on uh, on papyrus once that technology came to Egypt? Uh, it, it was big, uh, but in fact, um, what allow us to say that um, during the fourth, tenth century, uh, so papyri was no more the first media, is because paper became the first media in the administration. Because in reality, um, uh, we have some statistics and we can uh, see that uh, um, still um, papyri were used uh, to uh, write codices or uh, write probably documents. Uh, 
um, and until the 10th century, um, at, at least until the 10th century. So. Uh, okay this i think this brings the, our discussion to the end and thank you very much and for your uh, uh, time and accepting the invitation thank you all for coming to this event and please uh, feel free to have uh, coffee tea and next room and maybe carry uh, carry on the discussion thank you very much and i thank you very much yeah <laughs> thank you man. thank you very much thank you Merci. Thank you. Very, very good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.